really excited to be here with you, Tony. Um, today, I have Tony Wrighton on the show. Um, he is a multiple best-selling author, been published in 12 different languages. Um, you probably know him from the Zestology podcast that he hosts, um, which teaches you how to live life with more energy, vitality, and motivation. And I know you're also an expert in NLP, um, Tony, which I'm really excited to explore um, because it's something I'm particularly interested in myself. Um, to kind of kick off, one of the things that I'd love to, um, to chat to you about is how can you use NLP? I know you have some hacks because um, we're recording this on a Monday morning. How can you use NLP to get yourself to do something that you know you should do, um, whether that's going to the gym, working out, eating better, um, but you really don't feel like doing? Well, firstly, how can you take any NLP expert seriously when he's sitting on the floor of his spare room with his computer precariously kind of balancing on his duvet, <laughs> unshaven, tired after the baby woke me up at 5 a.m.? Um, I'm not sure I'm kind of like a model of NLP theory and practice, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Well, you showed um, up here despite all of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So. Well, look, I've been really looking forward to chatting, by the way, because I know a lot of our kind of interests intersect. Yeah, um, and you know, you, you kind of focus on high performance and I think this is quite interesting with, with, um, the NLP stuff that I started learning NLP about 15 year, years ago and that kind of developed into focusing a little bit more on energy and vitality and zestology, but they're all kind of interlinked. Mm. So, um, NLP just for people who are listening, who might not know what it is, stands for neuro linguistic programming, which is a very bad title, a very long title that, um, that people came up with in the 70s, just when computers were kind of getting big. And so everything had to have a, a name that related to a computer. That's why it's called Neuro oh, is that the background Programming. Here? Yeah. But when you think about it, it's actually not a bad title, really. I mean, it, 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 I think that a better title might be Neuro Hacking, in that you're really looking how to kind of optimize the way that the brain works to perform mm -hmm. better. So, you know, I, I wonder if they invented it now, if they'd call it Neuro Hacking, but Neuro Linguistic Programming will do and i, and I probably would actually so it's a bit yeah. like neurofeedback isn't it which is a different technique but yeah yeah exactly mm. yeah and actually there's there's um there's all sorts of different kind of slightly confusing names that, of, of modalities that came out of california in the 70s but neurolinguistic programming is used a lot around the world by millions of people actually it's used a lot in um sales a lot in therapy a lot in kind of advertising it's used a lot in um sports psychology a lot actually you'll find a lot of these top sports psychologists use it as well um and it's a study of how how people do things well so we could call it neurohacking or how, how people do things well um in terms of on a monday morning getting something done mm -hmm. i i always think that you know when you when you consider it to be a study of how people do things well. One of the things that's very helpful with NLP is to work out how you yourself do things well. So on a good day, what do I do? On a bad day, what do I do? And one of my kind of obsessions that I've developed over the years is um, tracking. Um, so I keep a big spreadsheet. I mean, I am a bit of a nerd, I have to admit. And I track my daily lifestyle habits, um, supplements that I've taken, okay. some of the foods that I've eaten. And then I track things like mood and my energy levels and how focused I was. And then correlations start to appear. So, oh, on the days that I go to the gym, I've got 5% more energy. And, and I think, you know, in this way, you're working out in an NLP way how to do things well. But it's a slightly less dry way of doing it than using a kind of an old fashioned NLP technique. You're, you've got your own data and you know on the days you do a yoga class, you got more energy and you're more focused and you work better. That is super interesting. So hang on to this, because this sounds quite a technical way. So you're doing this yeah. with a spreadsheet. Yes. It's like a series of questions. So I do this to a degree with my clients, particularly like on the nutritional side. So one of yeah. the things I use a lot is let's start to understand how food makes you feel. Cause once you understand how it makes you feel, you're less likely, you know, that's part of a modality I use for say controlling cravings. Cause mm. then you understand the outcome, like my energy is less or I get brain fog. How do you, how are you kind of self quantifying? Are there a list of questions on the spreadsheet? Is it certain times a day? I quite like to give this a go. 
Well, it's interesting because I can see that you're wearing an Ura ring and yeah. I am as well. Um, and that obviously tracks quite a lot of interesting stuff. It tracks your heart rate, your heart rate variability, which is a good indicator of overall health. It can track your meditation sessions, your respiratory rate and your sleep and so on. So that can give you some data. But then as you say, there's some stuff that is a lot more subjective. So what I tend to do is give myself, you know, and what I've been doing for years is give myself a mark out of 100 for certain things. So like energy, how's my energy today? Well, I can tell you how my energy is this morning. It's probably about 60%. <laughs> but you know, on a really good day. Yeah. It yeah. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. But on, on a good day, it'd be kind of 90%. So, so it's quite subjective. I've got a, a nasty feeling that, you know, top scientists used to double blind placebo controlled studies might not be that impressed by my scientific rigor in my tracking. But I think the point is that whilst it's not completely scientific, it's the best we've got. We're trying to work out how we do things well. You can do it with other people. You could, you know, I mean, you, did, you could read a book and they, they could say, well, you know, like on the days that I ran for 10 miles, I had more energy afterwards or less energy afterwards. But really the best indicator of how you do things well is yourself. So you might as well try and track it. Now, if a spreadsheet sounds just a little bit of a step too far for you, um, I've tried every tracking app out there. Right. And... There's not many good ones, but there is one that I've just started using, which I think is, it's quite basic, but it's actually quite interesting, the results it gives you, and it's called Dalio. So that is Dalio, so D-A-Y-L-I-O. And it's very simple the way it works. It asks you in the evening how your mood has been through the day. And it's all kind of, it's quite emoji based. It's quite intuitive. It works, it seems to work quite well. It's got a lot of good reviews as well. And then it asks you all sorts of things that you did that day. So did you work? Did you go on a date? Did you have a workout? And you can set all your different kind of values as well. So I've been setting things like, did I meditate? Did I go to the gym? Did I switch off my screens for a couple of hours? And then you can start to see correlations and patterns as time goes on. It also, you know, we talk about habits and kind of motivation on a Monday morning. It also helps you set goals. So one of my goals is I want to meditate every day. You're a mum. you know how hard it is to find the time to meditate. Um, but it's kind of keeping you on track. It's sending you reminders as well. And then giving you kind of, you know, a three day streak when you do it after three days. So I've got quite high hopes for that app. Um, it's not particularly advanced, but it's a, it's a nice way of um, tracking. Cool. Well, I'll link to that in the show notes. And also I'd like, I'm, I'm going to give that a go myself on meditation. Yeah. Cause this is something as a parent like yourself, that yeah. I've been really playing around with. And I find that the best time for me to meditate a hundred percent is first thing in the morning um, early. Uh, yes. Which is, I think it's harder when you've got a baby. Um, yes. I found that really, really difficult. Now that my kids are a bit older, it's easier for me to regulate my bedtimes a bit more, my own bedtime and my wake up time. Um, well, that's, that's music to my ears because my morning <laughs> meditation has gone out the window. Yeah. <laughs> so, it does, so it does get easier, does it? It gets, well, I say it gets easier. I don't know if all the parents listening, I mean, it gets easier in some respects and it gets harder, right? We've got some testosterone surges going on in our house at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting. How, how old are yours? So I've got two boys that are kind of 18 months apart, coming up to 11 and 12, the other one's right. 12, and okay. see there's a fair amount. And then a daughter who's seven. Um, right, okay, okay. So you, so, I mean, so meditation is really obviously really important for you i mean i can't imagine how little time you have in fact i'm very honored you've made time to talk to me today but i mean i've been following you is, is meditation something that you do with your clients as well yeah i do so i actually use a couple of techniques so on my own what i will do is i tend to meditate in the morning um i just find that's the best time because i know i'm not going to be disturbed generally i am up before my kids um and it's peaceful it's quiet um, when I have more time, I love Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, but his are pretty long. But I was going to ask you actually who you, whether you use guided meditations. Um, but I love the visualization aspect and the manifestation um, aspect of it. I also like, and kind of tuning into the field. It all sounds a bit woo woo, but I have become a bit more down that road more recently. Um, I also, with my clients who are really busy and what I use with myself is I don't know if you've come across um, Emily Fletcher's work. 
um i have yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i love her idea of when you don't have time of kind of centering yourself using mindfulness where you just work on the breath um, and use kind of one to two minutes of mindfulness to kind of get yourself in that state and then um, meditate for around sort of 10 to 12 minutes and then but without an alarm because she says otherwise then you're kind of pulling yourself out of this state and then transitioning into manifestation but she uses this um, mantra if you like um, of like one if you're if you haven't done her training um, just to kind of center yourself and bring it back. And the thing that I found that really, really hit with me, and I was, I don't know about you, I, I love to read. And if I find one thing from a book that I can take away that was valuable then, or one thing from a podcast like yours, it, it, it's, that is to me is giving me real value. And the thing that she uses the analogy of, because a lot of people I think got, get bogged down with meditation that they're not doing it right, um, or they can't kind of focus their minds or all these thoughts are coming in. And she talks about how um, you've got to imagine yourself at a party and your job is to be there as either an attendee or um, you know, a guest or the host. Your job is not to be the bouncer. Mm -hmm. And so you mustn't be the bouncer of your thoughts. It's not to, that concept of not judging them is don't be the bouncer. Let them come in and out and they'll still be there. But if you start to engage with them, we all have the thoughts. That's when it becomes contemplation, not meditation. And just, I don't know, just that analogy for me has really helped me. Because then I think if I'm starting to think, I'm like, okay, I'm tripping into contemplation now. I need to move my back self back. Um, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And, and she recently became a mum, didn't she, as well? Yeah, she did, actually. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I... I have also been very interested in Joe Dispenza. I don't know much about him and I've got friends who are kind of mad on him as well. Oh, really? um, I've, I tend to either do a meditation on my own, but I actually did learn it from one of Emily Fletcher's courses. Um, and I also quite like Sam Harris's app, which I, I use. Oh, I haven't um, tried that. That's been on my list, actually. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Um, but tend to kind of do it on my own most of the time um, with a mantra pretty simple it's i mean you know it's amazing how diff how different my brain operates and how i'm how i'm just so much more chill and i feel like i've got more space and time when i do it um mm -hmm. i i think it really suits me actually but as you say it is hard to find the time to do it in the morning so at the moment i am doing it pretty much every day but it's not necessarily in the morning it's just when i can grab 10 minutes um, and actually, obviously, you know, my day job is I, I'm a presenter at Sky and yeah. we've got don't tell anyone, but we've got changing rooms at Sky, which we're supposed to kind of go and put our suits on in. But sometimes we just close the door and turn the light off and uh, meditate in there for a few minutes. And it's great. It's like the best preparation I could do for going on air. <laughs> yeah, that it's actually amazing, isn't it? That's the thing. And I think Emily's technique teaches you do that where you can do it anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you also you work a lot. You're not just a sports presenter, but you work a lot with athletes as well. Um, yes. Do you find that they use meditation and, and visualization, both of them, pretty sort of powerfully? Uh, not really, actually. Yeah. But I mean, I, I tell you, I don't work that often with athletes now. I used to do more work. So when, so when I trained in NLP, I was kind of doing the sports stuff and doing the NLP stuff as well. And then I moved away from doing one-on-one -on -one coaching simply because I didn't really have enough time. And yeah. uh, part of the reason I was doing it is because I wanted to increase my skills and all the rest of it. Um, now I quite enjoy kind of doing the group work, the podcast work, the Sky stuff. And that's enough, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but, um, yeah but I have to say that with, with the sportsmen that, and, and I still know a lot of sportsmen and women and i'm always surprised by how few of them do work on visualization techniques um you know nlp techniques um a lot of them could benefit from more use of kind of sports psychologists or sports coaches and i'm surprised that they don't because it's it's clear to me that when they do you know i've got a good friend called carl morris for example who's a a uh, NLP kind of a performance coach really yeah. um, and he works with a lot of golfers but he's worked with loads of people in different sports worked with um, some of the England cricket team during the 2005 Ashes and he's worked with um, Super League uh, rugby league clubs and it's amazing the difference in performance I mean only about a month ago I think Graham McDowell the golfer got in touch with him hasn't won a tournament in years and then just a, a chat on Skype 
and then he went off and won his first tournament in years and secured his PGA Tour card for a couple of years. And I got really excited by that. You know, the geek in me really gets excited by that kind of thing because you think, God, you, you really, with sport, you can measure performance in a way that you can't, you know, I feel like if I was a footballer, and I meditated for an hour, I'd score more goals. <laughs> but because we're not footballers, we can't measure, measure our performance in that way. So it's kind of, it's a little bit more ethereal. Yes, that's true. But it's kind of like you're saying, although you have this subjective tracking, I find that's really useful. So on the days that I'm, you know, the same, and I'm not perfect, I don't do it every day, but I do notice, as you said earlier, that I kind of have more time. It's almost like, you know, mm. um, when you're playing tennis, there's more time than yes. you think when the ball hits and it bounces. And I find that a meditation practice creates that space between the thoughts. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's definitely something I've kind of, yeah, had to work on because I was nah. always just, particularly as a corporate lawyer, just go, 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 go from one thing to the next. Right. So you used to be a corporate lawyer. Yeah. And then, and then you got, and then you thought career change. I'm going to be a performance coach. Um, yeah, well, I was a corporate lawyer for many years in London and then in an investment bank. And then basically, um, I became a partner in a firm outside, had my children and it was through life circumstances, to be honest, post children. I actually, I think I just, there was a real culture in London of work all night, day and night, you know, you, you don't need sleep, which is contrary to everything I teach my clients now in terms of how like, I think sleep's the secret superpower. I don't know about you. I think it's oh, yeah, super definitely. important, isn't it? Yeah. You notice it now, right, with a baby, once you don't, you can't have sleep, you realize almost how important it is. Mm. Um, but there was definitely this culture of, you know, not really needing sleep. And I'd work for hours and hours, days, days on end on the trot. And um, then I just basically was really burnt out after I had my kids. I had kind of three kids in, um, in four and a half years, which was maybe pretty crazy. <laughs> that didn't help. <laughs> um, and I was really, I think my adrenal glands were just shot to put. And I ended up with, um, with double pneumonia. They thought I had lung cancer, actually. My kids got sick, a bit like your baby was last night. And I was like, oh, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not going to get ill. And then suddenly had this chest infection. And ultimately I ended up kind of not being allowed to leave the hospital. It turned out I had double pneumonia on both lungs after some CT scans. Um, and that just like sparked this transformation in me. I was like, there's got to be a way to actually have it all right. There's got, cause as you were talking about there with athletes, athletes do it right. So there has to be a way of having high performance and health. And that's kind of how the whole high performance health thing that I um, sort of specialize in was born. So I then went off and completely requalified, um, retrained and just read everything I could on it as well. And um, was then working with clients and just determined to, you know, not just, once I turned my own health around, it was kind of like, how can I do this for other people and make it sustainable, like performance sustainable? So yeah. yeah. That's the, you're so right about the sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I noticed my different reactions to, because the baby's being ill, as you say, my reaction to the baby crying when I've had five hours sleep on the night I'm looking after him, to the, to the, the reactions on the night that I've had eight hours sleep when I've had the earplugs in and my partner's been looking after him. <laughs> yes, it's just, it's such a different reaction. So, what, wow, what an amazing story. So, um, we've obviously talked about the power of meditation. That's obviously something that's really helped you. Do you look at, um, in terms of kind of creating space in your day or creating space in your thoughts, do you look at supplements to help you do that as well? Yeah, there's certain things I take. Um, and I'm always kind of like experimenting with different ones. Um, <clears throat> I do a lot with kind of, genetics and epigenetics that's kind of where I focus <clears throat> excuse me most of my time and so I know for example from my own that my methylation pathways are um, impaired so the biggest thing that I notice for energy is B vitamin support so I'm always making sure that I'm getting you know really good diet full of energy but then also I will supplement with B vitamins particularly when I'm going through a really stressful period um, you know if I'm particularly busy or I've got a lot on um, like I have at the moment, B12 makes a massive difference. Um, you know, the main ones is, I think you should be taking them as a complex, to be honest, because they're designed to work together. And there's some great supplements out there. I've been, um, I've been experimenting recently with Qualia by Neurohacker, because they've got 
a combination of a really unique combination actually of kind of adaptogens with B vitamins and I think there's what's they've amazing. clearly called it that because of the Wolf of Wall Street in Quaaludes yeah. haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> every time I see that stuff I'm like oh I've got to try that one qualia have you given it a go or? no I haven't is it good it, it is really good yeah I I think it's really good um so I sometimes do that um I don't think, I mean, I was actually chatting to them at the health optimization event a couple of weeks ago in London that we were both at. um, And they were saying it's not designed to be taken every day. You should be taking it for five days and then have two days off. Um, So, and I, and I agree with that. I don't think we should be continuously supplementing with things. Sometimes I use L-theanine to calm myself down a bit because I'm a bit hyper. (laughs) Yeah, I've tried that. L-theanine has got a nice kind of buzz, but I started taking it And I thought, wow, this is amazing. And then I took it every day and it didn't really seem to work after a while. No, it's funny how things happen like that, isn't it? I think you do need to rotate. um, Yeah. They say there's no tolerance to it, but... um, Actually, hang on, maybe I'm thinking of L-tyrosine rather than L-theanine. Oh, it could have been. Might be thinking about L-tyrosine, yeah. Um, So I sometimes, L-theanine is the amino acid that you find in green tea. So sometimes you take that alongside caffeine as well to moderate it. I'm a fast metabolizer of caffeine. I know that from my DNA. Um, and then I also, what else do I take? I'm pretty good about taking fish oils because I find they're anti-inflammatory and I find that that also helps with my energy and my brain function um, as well. But mostly I focus on a really good diet, good sleep, and I'm pretty kind of, if I'm, if I'm working on something, I will really, really focus on that one thing. I use... Um, the one I like to use binaural beats. I use focus at will at the moment quite a bit. I don't know if you've used that. App. No, I haven't. Yeah. I like that. Um, you can kind of, they won't actually, you can't choose your tracks because the way they work is they kind of get that's a, that's a productivity thing you can do because at the end of the session, when you've been listening, they'll actually ask you um, how productive were you and you give yourself a score. So a bit subjective. Um, if you don't like a track, you can skip it. Um, but I really, really like theirs. Um, so if I'm kind of really trying to assimilate, like I'm writing a book at the moment and I'm doing a lot of research, then I might be listening to that to focus, um, there. Sometimes I use some lion's mane as well. Um, but yeah, kind of play. What about you? What do you take? I, I mean, it's, it's quite interesting. I've found, I've, I've, I've tried lots of stuff as well, and I've been making a mental kind of shopping list of some things to try based on what you've been talking about. I have to say that of all the supplements I've tried, and, and actually my tracking has borne this out, nothing mm-hmm. seems to be the magic pill. In fact, magnesium, simple old plain old magnesium seemed to be the supplement that worked best and seemed to increase my energy levels by about 2.5 percent more recently though i have tried a couple of supplements which seem to have worked very well now have you tried resveratrol yes i have and have you noticed have you noticed anything from it yeah i'm not i'm actually about to start taking it again because again i cycle in and out of things um it's meant to mimic the kind of effects sort of hormetic stress that you get from fasting um, so it's really good for longevity, um, as well as being a powerful antioxidant. I can't say, I notice my skin, like certain things will make my skin and my hair glow more. Um, and I've also used it in like creams and things, but I haven't noticed any particular or tr- knowingly tracked like neuro benefits from it. Have you then? Have no. you found well, I've only just started introducing it. Yeah. So it's, it, we're very early days, but resveratrol is something that, um, longevity experts, the one I'm thinking of is Dr. David Sinclair, who's someone yeah. who's like widely respected in terms of his work on longevity. And he's a big fan of resveratrol mm. and takes it himself and has, you know, kind of bangs on about how great it is. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try this. It's the uh, resveratrol is the compound found in uh, red wine and blueberries. Um, and I think there's been many newspaper articles written over the years saying red wine is great because it's got resveratrol in it, but it turns out you'd need to drink about a hundred glasses of it a week to get the same amount as you would from a capsule. So not quite sure that's a Zestology recommendation. (laughs) Anyway, one of the side effects of the fact that they reckon that because it mimics the effects of fasting and so on, and it's also supposed to be an antioxidant, 
um, one of the side effects is that it can also increase your focus and your brain power. And they're, what they're very excited about with resveratrol is the fact that um, with Alzheimer's patients, for example, it can reverse some of the effects of Alzheimer's and some of the kind of the plaque that forms. Um, so it's really interesting, some of the kind of neuro effects that they're finding of resveratrol. And obviously it's kind of quite early days. And I mean, there is not that much long-term research about it. But I've taken it the last couple of days and I had a very long shift at Sky yesterday, five hours on air and quite an, quite an intense five hours. And I felt like I was just a bit more in the moment and a bit more focused. I, I, my my brain is capable of wandering very easily and um, seemed like it was working quite well. So that's that's quite an interesting one for me with, with focus. Are you, I'm gonna... taking it? Are you taking it during the day? or? Um, I took it with a meal with fat. Mm. Apparently you have to take it with fat um, mm. because otherwise it didn't really, it was not really absorbed in the body. So I took it with a kind of, you know, a, a, a fairly high fat lunch. Um, but again, I'm not take, I'm not even taking a full dose yet. I always like to take half a dose to start off with, see if it works all right, um, and then um, and then see. I tell you, the, on another supplement that's worked very well, the one thing that's made a massive difference to my performance is the fact that for 25 years, I've always suffered with a dodgy gut and low energy levels at time. Hence the name of the podcast, Zestology. It's all about energy, hmm. um, and tried every different diet, giving up gluten, giving up dairy, meditating, doing all this, that, and, and nothing quite seemed to work. Lots of things helped a little bit. And I'd always heard about um, histamine intolerance, but I didn't really kind of know much about it. But as I kind of got into that more recently, everything's changed for me. Uh, it turns out that I must just be making an, an, an excess of histamine. And I'm not really quite sure why that is, but it's, wow, since I've started eating a low histamine diet and taking histamine reducing supplements that has been such a change for me i've been so much sharper and less inflamed what histamine reducing supplements because it's interesting you say that because i know yeah. that um there's some research now that suggests like for children for example on the autism spectrum um that it's not just a case of like removing things like gluten that can help but also going on a low histamine diet can be shown to help improve their kind of brain function um, right what which is really really interesting you say that what have yeah. you, um in terms of histamine reducing supplements what have you been taking i mean honestly i feel like i'm a world authority on histamine right now i've been doing i've just because i <laughs> because you know all, all these other supplements that i tried and everything else that i tried it always worked to a certain extent but i, mean, I used to get a really dodgy gut and i just could not work it out it was it was embarrassing how bad it was and it would kind of really rule me out of a lot of i mean i i never yeah, I, I had to cancel stuff. You know, it was just, it would wow. really affect my kind of day-to-day -day life. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I've embraced this. Let's put it that way. Quercetin is a natural compound found in apples and onions. Um, and thankfully, you don't have to eat lots of onions, but you can take quercetin. And I've found, actually, if you take quercetin, one of the little hacks I've found is taking a quercetin tablet in the middle of the night helps me sleep so much deeper in the second half of the night. I'd always have very kind of edgy, broken sleep as it came towards morning. And that must be the histamine swilling around in my body. Um, Seeking Health have a couple of excellent supplements as well. They, they've got um, a probiotic, which, is only, which has only histamine-friendly bacteria. And they have uh, another product called Histamine X, which has quercetin and loads of other stuff in it. Um, mm -hmm in the middle of the night as in you would if you wake up or you wake yourself up wake up goes always get goes to loo in the middle of the night okay. and um take take a question supplement before i go back to bed by the way um hit one of the side effects of histamine for me i think was that i was going to the loo loads in the middle of the night and i don't do that nearly so much now that i'm on a low histamine diet so that doesn't and my skin's much better um my joints are much better. I don't have a sore back anymore. You know, I mean, it's quite considerable. And the main thing is my belly is just loads better and therefore my energy levels are better as well. So yeah, it's, it's quite pronounced. There's also um, French maritime tree bark. I don't know if you've heard of that, but that is a natural antihistamine, which is quite an interesting one. So I'll take that as well, but I'm not sure it works that well. So did you get any benefits with this? Do you get hay fever or anything? Did it help you in the summer months or? 
Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. Hay fever was a lot better. That it wasn't completely gone, but it was a lot better than it was. Um, and I'm absolutely sure that's all part of it as well. And um, you know, it's probably some way to go. But uh, yeah, it's been. It's been. I like. Oh, my skin. I used to get really dry skin. That's kind of cleared up. Um, I mean, look, it's not perfect. I was getting very blocked up nose and runny eyes, um, which is slightly embarrassing because it looks like you're crying. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> anyway, you know, I mean, I'm, look, I'm so interested in this. I'm actually probably going to launch just a, like a histamine intolerance website, just l- like a blog, just, you know, to kind of yeah. chronicle some of my, my interest in it because I know it is quite niche, but up to 15% of people have some kind of histamine intolerance. So it's worth checking out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> particularly when it's having such an impact, right? If you've noticed that on your gut function as well, I mean, it's quite extreme yeah. if you're having to even cancel out. And that's not, do you think some of that's down to the probiotics as well? Or like, did you have any gut imbalances? Did you get that tested or? Well, you see that, that's the interesting thing. Why do I have a histamine intolerance? That's what I'm still trying to work out. Mm. Um, but no doubt I've had, you know, since I was 18, I've had this like, you know, kind of on off problems with my gut and so on. So something wasn't right. I don't know. I don't know what it was there. That's, that's to be investigated. How interesting. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. so th- those are the supplements that have probably were worked best for me. Um, but uh, Qualia, I'm going to be all over it. Uh, <laughs> you have to take quite a few. I think it's like seven capsules. Or seven something. capsules. Yeah. 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 I yeah. just love the idea of like trying out these supplements that just give you just low to focus. Resveratrol. I mean, that could be quite interesting because I've been taking a very low dose of it so far. And uh, I think your recommended dose is about four times what I've been taking. So that could be quite interesting as well. I'll, yeah. I'll report back. Yeah, um, I was actually yeah. interesting about to try it as well. Because did you read um, Dr. Sinclair's recent book? I was actually communicating with him on it because he takes metformin you... as well as... Yes. We were chatting over Instagram because he, as well as the resveratrol. And I, funnily enough, was prescribed metformin back in my late 20s because I had polycystic ovarian syndrome and insulin resistance, which I've now, again, completely cured myself from with uh, nutritional measures. Um, but I couldn't stomach. I think the side effects of metformin are pretty extreme. I, I couldn't eat on it at all. I, um, and that's, um, I, I saw that he takes metformin and I thought, I don't really know much about it, but I thought that was actually something with a lot of side effects. So I was quite surprised. But then he also oh, takes well. statins. So is he, <laughs> he's full of contradictions, isn't he? Pick that bit up yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I haven't I haven't actually read the book yet, but I heard his um, podcast on Bulletproof Radio, and uh, and I thought, oh, I definitely want to read that book. And I've done a bit more research into him as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a great book. Um, That's I'm great you've been that. chatting to him. Anyway, I mean, he's there's, there's, he's a very interesting guy. He's into. Um, do you know much about nicotinamide riboside? Am I yeah. pronouncing that right? Yeah, the. Um... Yeah, they, that's one of the pathways they've kind of with anti-aging. Um, yeah. I haven't got to that bit because I'm actually really interested in what he has to say on it all in terms of, um, and there's a few, there's a few supplement companies actually that kind of claim to stimulate that um, pathway as well. Um, but the only other, do you know, the other one I was just going to mention actually there that has made a night and day difference to me. Mm. I've tried supplement wise is Kinton in terms of the Ooh. minerals. That's like a filtered seawater. Oh yes. Fishing. Yeah. Try that. And I did. Yeah. Different minerals. So instead of taking magnesium, I've been taking that. Um, Cause their, their belief is that you can actually disrupt by taking one mineral over another. Um, and I had two prolapse discs some time ago in my, in my, in my neck actually. And I'd always had pain and I always thought it was always down to that. Um, even though it kind of happened years before. And when I'm taking those mineral supplements, uh, morning and evening, the pain goes, which is amazing. Because I've never, you know, like we were saying, it's all kind of a little bit um, kind of subjective what happens. But this, I was just not expecting that to happen at all. Um, which that's, um, yeah, that's that's really great. So how did you kind of separate it out? Because obviously originally you came to this because you kind of got quite ill after the birth of your children and so on. How did you think that the Quinton was down to, uh, uh, the, the Quinton affected you physically rather than mentally or emotionally, or also just in terms of recovery in terms of getting over illness? Yeah. So I didn't, I've only taken that, uh, very, very recently actually in the last few months. 
Um, and I just wanted to give it a trial. And it was just that I noticed the pain in my back went. And I was like, wow, because I don't like to take any medication or anything. So I thought, well, I'll, you know, it, well, I wasn't deliberately taking it for that. I just know that most of us are deficient in magnesium. Um, and I'd come across it actually originally through Tim Gray. Um, yeah. and Our buddy Tim Gray is a big fan of Quinton, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, he's a massive fan of it. Yeah. And when he first... Uh, suggested it I think I was like what is this you know it's all like yeah used to it quite quickly and it's a small amount and then I just saw my pain go so then I tried it without it because I was like right okay I'm gonna now see and sure enough the pain came back um no way yeah that's that's great and doesn't that show how you have to find your own your own supplements your own practices that work because I tried it and yeah, didn't no really like the taste, but did no benefit. No, no, no. Oh, okay, interesting. So maybe yeah. that wasn't something that you particularly needed. Yeah, I think for yeah, my exactly. obviously, yeah. um, it did. Um, but you have, I know you have the Zestology morning routine to give yourself um, a huge energy kick. Can you talk us through <laughs> yeah. what that is? Because <laughs> I love anything that's energy for me, even though I'm kind of <laughs> like this Duracell bunny I love. Yeah, well, it's funny because the Zestology morning routine was much more rigorously adhered to before I became a dad. <laughs> but it, it involved, you know, it involved getting a great night's sleep and waking up at a certain time and meditating in front of the infrared light, which I know you're a fan of the oh, infrared yeah. light yeah, now. Um, are you, um, do you use that every day, the infrared light? Not religiously every day, but I try and use it most days for a short period. I quite like meditating in front of it, actually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So, so it really involved meditating, infrared light, um, either fasting until lunch, which is what I tend to normally do. Oh, oh hang on. That is my podcast assistant intervening there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at home. I have what you can hear is um, I'm not usually recording at home but i have a puppy who has gone into season so you can't go out who i need season. to babysit oh dear um, i love that i love the kind of the delicate ways that we describe kind of <laughs> dogs and their kind of various functions into season and, and I, when we had dogs growing up they didn't they wouldn't go for a week you'd say be clean be clean <laughs> be clean <laughs> did they ring the bell to go out as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, just intermittent fasting, that, that's something that definitely agrees with me. Don't, don't normally eat until lunch. But the other thing is, you know, you were asking about NLP stuff earlier on. Mm. And one of the things that I've found is that when you want to get motivated for something, um, it's very hard to kind of drum up motivation from nowhere. Motivation doesn't really lead to action. Action leads to motivation. And that's something that I always try and remember. It's a kind of just this little kind of catchphrase that seems to work. If you want to go to the gym, if you want to kind of do a workout three times a week, trying to drum up the motivation to go doesn't really work. But just by taking action to get to the gym, that'll sort you out and then you'll have a workout. So motivation doesn't necessarily lead to action. Action leads to motivation. If you have that as kind of one of your morning mantras alongside the intermittent fasting, maybe the meditation, maybe the juve light, um, that's, that's quite a nice way of getting up in the morning and kickstarting your energy. Yeah, I like that. Action does. Yeah. The thing is, it's almost like that energy, isn't it? What's in motion stays in motion. Yeah. It's the getting going that's the hardest thing. Yeah. And, and just the other thing in terms of the the morning routine and the thing that kind of kickstarts my energy level is we talked about the tracking a little bit earlier on and i realized that a lot of your listeners are probably judging me right now and a lot of zestology listeners are judging me as well for my spreadsheets but that's okay <laughs> um if there was one thing on my spreadsheet that when i didn't do it yeah. um my energy levels reduced by about 20 percent. okay so can you guess what that was? When you didn't do it. When I didn't do it. So the biggest one I would say is exercise for me, but I've also got into cold showering and that makes a massive difference. My three big ones are that energy and exercise. Yeah. I mean, exercise Not definitely, exercise. definitely work for me. Cold showers. I haven't tracked, but I, I, I think I do feel good after cold showers. Mm. Um, it was actually, 
just arranging something fun in my day <laughs> um, energized me so much that when I didn't do that, my energy levels dropped by kind of 20%. And that's why I'm saying, look, I know it's a bit weird tracking how much fun I had on a particular day, but yeah, I mean, just organizing the good stuff, the relaxing stuff, the stuff that you, that you live for when there wasn't any of that in a particular day, when there was too much of the cold showering and the sitting in front of a screen and all the rest of it. Um, then I didn't find that I, I was quite so energized. So you would basically put something fun in every day, would you? Yeah, wouldn't necessarily arrange it in, but mm. on, on the days that there was something fun in, um, hanging out with friends, um, whatever it might be. I mean, it might be something as simple as uh, reading a book or hanging out with my partner or whatever it might be. Yeah. But um, yeah, your it's energy arbitrary, is isn't it? What, what, what's fun and, and what isn't kind of thing. But you kind of know in the, in the moment. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? The whole self quantification shouldn't be to the point that you're actually just so you're like a robot. Um, it's got to be fun as well. Yeah, um, that, that's what I quite like about that app, Dailyo. Um, mm. It's because self quantification, if you're using a spreadsheet, is quite hard work, especially if you've not got a maths background like me. I just uh, it's just hard to work out how to actually get the results. But Dailyo makes it very simple. It doesn't take more than a you know a minute or two each evening. So have you swapped it out completely for Dailyo now? Is that what you're using? Well, yeah, because I've been doing it for years. And also, you know, I mean, I think part of the reason that I was motivated to do it before because I felt pretty low. I felt low energy. I felt a bit ill and I couldn't kind of work it out. So I was trying all these different supplements and everything else to say, okay, what worked? Now I feel a lot better. That's, you know, that's down to the histamine stuff that we discussed. So yeah. now it's more about a bit of fun for me and trying the different tracking apps and reporting back on my newsletter and um, yeah, I don't want something that I don't need more time in front of my screens. So anything that kind of brings it down to one minute a day is fine. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, I'm yeah. definitely keen to, um, I'm keen to give that a go myself. Yeah. Um, do you, do you monitor everything according to your aura? Do you have a look each morning and check and see how well you've slept, what might have influenced it or the aura ring? Yeah. Um, yes. And that's, that's the other thing about the histamine levels. Um, I can tell whether I've eaten high histamine food the night before based on my heart rate variability overnight and my heart rate. Um, so if I've eaten food that doesn't agree with me, my heart rate will be 10 to 15 beats a minute higher a night. Um, and, and that is histamine food. Annoyingly, all, a lot of the nicest foods in the world are quite high in histamine, yeah. avocado, red wine, chocolate, leftovers, it's pretty mm -hmm. annoying but um but yeah so so the ura does give me some good stats on that i actually i the thing i notice as well is alcohol even just say two drinks my my heartbeat would be 10 beats higher if i had a glass or two of wine it would be 10 beats higher overnight which shows you that's my assistant again <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell her. in season in season um now well listen before because before we finish I, there's a couple of questions i want to ask you yeah, sure. um something i've always asked everyone on my podcast is what is one book that you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy and i'm, I'm really impressed i've been really impressed over this podcast at the, obviously the level of training that you've undergone and your kind of career change from your old career to your new career i love anyone who's into genetics because i just I th I, I, in fact i'd love to record a separate podcast on genetics maybe we could do that next yeah, time we could do that yeah um but uh, but yes yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to know what you'd say so one book have i got to narrow book. it down to one you have yeah um by the way on jeans i can see you've got ben lynch's dirty jeans behind you which is an excellent book and i would highly recommend i don't think i've spoken about that on the podcast but i love ben lynch and i think that's a great book yeah i think it's a really good book there's so many that i can see behind me that um but I just love, I don't know which one to pick out because if you said to me, can you pick out one for each sector? I'd find it easier. Um, but I would say, can I give you three books or is that not allowed? Of course you can. Okay. The one thing I think is a brilliant book and that certainly helped me to focus. I think that's a great book um, that I've read. The one um, thing that was recommended to me by someone else as well. It's a book all about focus. Yeah, all about focus and how well, just targeting one thing and growing that first, whatever that is, because as soon as you diversify, then that's when you're kind of fragmented more. Um, whereas if you hit that and you get success in that one area first, and then you slowly move on to something else. And that could be in any area of your life. Um, 
that, you know, whether that's a business thing or that might be something to do with like your training, your workouts, you hit that one thing. And then when you've really mastered that, then you move on. Um, so I love that book in terms of the business side. I love um, on a spiritual side, the seven laws of spiritual success, I think is a great book. Um, but then again, I'm having to really choose here because I also think Gabby Bernstein's book's amazing. Dr. Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, I think if you're trying to make a change, is brilliant. Um, all his books are great. Um, and then in terms of health, I'm just reading all the time and basically anything I can get my hands on, on health and energy and performance and kind of biohacking. Um, I'm super excited about, I did actually do quite a lot of training last year with Ben Greenfield um, on his key on program and he's got yeah. a book coming out boundless, which I'm exciting, which has got lots of research into longevity um, that's coming out there. But his book beyond training is a really good guide. Not just, it's not really just for athletes. Um, I think everything in it, in terms of how to approach your work, your productivity, your nutrition, um, your training, everything in that book is absolutely brilliant. It kind of is almost predates its time, if you like. Yeah. He's got, I've been listening to a podcast of his on um, raising kids. And uh, I felt kind of very inspired at how he inspired his kids over the summer holidays. He kind of asked them what they wanted to do and made a whole kind of project room for them, bought them loads of resources. And he, he sounded like he made it, made it really fun for the summer holidays for his kids to enjoy themselves and learn a bit at the same time and kind of think outside the box. So, um, yeah. so he, think, he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. I think, I, so I think that book's, um, yeah, really, really good book. Um, and then you asked me another question. Yes. What is your tip for more energy and vitality? You obviously mentioned quite a lot of stuff already, but yeah. anything that springs to mind? Yeah. My number one thing is wake up at least half an hour before you think you should, because that just sets you up for the day. Wake up to give yourself time. I think that if you just start your life, just rushing out the door or get, getting involved with the children or having but you know, whatever it is in the way that you customarily start your day, if you actually just dial it back a little bit, you gain so much time back and your day actually becomes so to live consciously, wake up half an hour before and decide to live consciously, whether that's going to be through a meditation program in the morning, just becoming more mindful during the day, but actually waking up and planning it and having that time for you, particularly as a parent. That would be my biggest thing. And if you can only manage five minutes at first, take five minutes and slowly work up. Yeah. Can I, nice. um, can I ask you those two same questions? I'd love to hear what your, um, your favorite book is. Yeah. Um, my favorite book is Josh Waitzkin's The Art of Learning. It's probably the only book that I go back to again and again. Um, he's someone who, he was a chess champion, started like kind of, pretty much beating grandmasters at the age of six and became one of the top chess players in the world. He, the film Searching for Bobby Fischer was about him. And then at 18, he gave it all up and he became a Tai Chi expert. And the art of learning basically brings together everything that helped him become a top chess player and a top Tai Chi player and kind of condenses it all. He's someone who doesn't write many books. In fact, I think that's probably the only one that he's written. He doesn't give many interviews, but uh, every word that comes out of his mouth is fantastic and you can kind of dip in and out of any any part of that book and you know a lot of what we've spoken about on this podcast is kind of about focus and high performance well to me he is just the absolute best for that as well as the book reads like a great tale amazing I'm, yeah. i haven't read oh it's it. so I'm good I, i'm i'm genuinely excited for you to read it um, and it's pretty you, much the only one I dip into. Is it an audio? Would you read it as an audio book? Because I know that was one thing I was going to say to you. Yeah. Um, the latest book by Dr. Um, Sinclair, the audio version is amazing. He reads Is it? Yes, it's brilliant. Um, right, yeah. I, I, do you know what? It's funny. I love podcasts, obviously, but I don't really listen to audio books because I like reading. Um, yeah. So I'd, I'd probably, yeah, I, I'd just read that one. And I like to make Kindle notes. Um, oh, yeah. I actually, yeah, I make, I use a service called Readwise, which is, um, I think it's a couple of quid a month and they send you your, uh, edited highlights of your favorite kind of, um, highlighted quotes on Kindle once a week or once a day or whenever you want it. 
And it's quite nice because sometimes you'll read a book, highlight a few things and then forget about it. But with this, a book I might have read five years ago and a little nugget that I liked, I'll get sent on an email by Readwise and it'll just remind me of that again. Yeah, I should try that actually because I quite often will have the audio and the physical version. I don't know what it is about Kindle. Yeah. I've never really, I don't know, never really got into, but I want to because I'd heard of Readwise and them um, sending you the notes. And also you can transport your notes out of Kindle, can't you? So it's much more efficient as well. Oh, maybe um, you can. Yeah, that'd be good yeah. too. Yeah. And, that's and then you can print them off. Yeah. Um, and what's yeah. your biggest energy? Well, I mean, something we haven't really mentioned that much. I realise there's a massive irony because... I'm a TV presenter, but um, getting away from the screens <laughs> just makes such a difference to me. Um, I'm going into work tonight and I mean, it's no exaggeration to say when I'm at work, I'm surrounded by probably 600 screens in one room and it is, and I've also got an earpiece in. So there's just absolutely no switching off or no escaping at all. And I love it. It's, it's a very stimulating, high energy environment, but escaping it all when I get back, is I find the best way to kind of recharge a little bit um, and create that sense of space that you were talking about earlier on. You know, um, meditation to do it as well, but just escaping the screens for a few hours a day, switching everything off, switching the Wi-Fi off, that seems to work for me the best. And then it, it means that when I do go back into that environment with all the screens, I've got a bit more space in my head to be at my best. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's probably a good health benefit for you as well. Um, just, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, unwinding mental. after that is quite tough, actually. Um, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, we're working, I'm working till midnight tonight, and you, know, you get back at half midnight to get straight into bed and go to sleep. It's, you can't, can it, you? it's difficult because your brain, I'm getting pretty good at it. <laughs> I can normally go to sleep by about 1 a.m. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not ideal, but you know. See, I can't sleep. If I go to the cinema, I can't sleep for about two hours because it's so stimulating. Right. I can imagine this similar, but you've obviously found a way of like winding down after all that um, involvement. I think so. It's probably not as good as a kind of a normal bedtime, but um, you know, you try all these different things and I mean, I'm not going to be wearing my blue blocking glasses on air anytime soon. So uh, I don't think that's, I think Sky Sports might take a little while before they get used to that. You think it's not quite mainstream enough yet. Yeah. Yeah. But I've really enjoyed this chat. It's got so much in common and you're obviously, I mean, I'm loving hearing about all the kind of Ben Greenfield stuff. Love to chat more about the genetic stuff in future. We've definitely got to have an in-person get together. Maybe we'll get Tim to bring some of his Quinton sachets as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have crazy. A <laughs> well, have, you, um, have you had a look at your genetics yet? Yes, I have. Yeah, I've done uh, okay. done 23 and Me, um, yeah. and then obviously read the Dirty Jeans book and used a couple of other sites as well. I think there's more to explore, so particularly yeah. around histamine. Mm, um, definitely. I, I found some of the stuff around uh, methylation quite interesting. I, I found it really hard to methylate. Like you were talking about B vitamins earlier. Mm. If I take a lot of B vitamins, I feel super sick. I have to be very, very careful about how much I take. Okay. So, um, so I then think you're I'm, kind of over methylating. Maybe. Yeah. I think my methylation mm. probably isn't brilliant. So I have to do it very gently. Yeah. No, um, we should have a look at that and then maybe, and then have a chat about it and kind of share. I'm always up for sharing mine as well. Cause I kind of, managed to ward off sort of diabetes and heart disease really prevalent in my family. And as I say, mm -hmm. kind of solve my PCOS, no, but with having looked at my genetics, it wasn't available and I did it. I just did it through diet and having a look at it, I can see exactly why that's kind of there. So mm -hmm. yeah, super interesting. We'll That'd to. be, yeah. I mean the, the APOE uh, four stuff is, is very interesting as well. That's the Alzheimer's yes. gene. Um, I've got one of those two genes and obviously that's another reason that I'm very interested in resveratrol. Mm. Um, uh, and to and getting sleep that's super important then. sleep yeah yeah exactly yeah and unfortunately working till midnight once or twice a week is not ideal for that but um you can't do everything i'm not going to leave my job because i need no. to get to bed at 10 o'clock every night you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> um, you just have to work the best you can yeah exactly and also you're so good at it and you love it then that would be really detrimental if you weren't doing it it's all yeah exactly yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing to, um, to chat to you, Tony. I really, really enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, me too. So the, the, I think the joint thing worked okay. The yeah. joint podcast. Yes. I think we'll, um, we'll definitely have my assistant put away somewhere for the next one. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, she probably needs to go and be clean now. Yeah. 
<laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, great talking to you. Yeah, thank you.